When I was making the Blues album, which came out last year, and I was looking through the live material of what we could add as the third disc to the set, um, I found a concert from Sheffield and one from Newcastle, and I used a couple of tracks from those, and I was then thinking what next to do, and I kind of, the Rory fans have been asking for new live material. So I went to see, you know, got those tape boxes out, digitized those, and then I saw there was also a show from Brighton and a show from Hammersmith, all from the Saint, this early uh, January, February 1977 tour. So uh, digitized them all, and I kind of figured Rory must be thinking of making a new live album. Every uh, two studio albums, he did a live one. So the, uh, he had Rory Gallagher and Juice, and then you get the Live in Europe album. He did Blueprint and Tattoo, which gives you the Irish tour live album. Uh, and then afterwards, Photo Finish and Top Priority give you the Stay Struck album. But this, this period didn't have a live album to follow against the grain and calling card. So I was, I think, looking at the, the way Rory recorded, using the Rolling Stones mobile, using Jethro Tull's mobile, and recording these four shows, he must have had in mind that he wanted a new live record. So they were there, they sound amazing. Um, so I got the tapes out, digitized them, went into a mixing studio and set about trying to find the perfect balance of tracks from across the four, the four nights. Um, they all kind of, each night had its own atmosphere. Brighton was, um, kind of, I'd say it was like the best recorded. I think that's the one with the Stones mobile. Just, it sounded mint. Sheffield had the craziest audience. There's some, there's some really good, I, for a bit I was just listening through the audience mics and just the sort of like, there was one kid stood next to it, just he's swearing his, his head off up after one of the tracks. He's just going, oh, fucking brilliant. He got, he's screaming into the mic. We had to sort of duck that quietly during the song and things. Newcastle was raucous and like uh, booming around. The sort of, it's, each venue has its own sound and then Hammersmith was the, probably the biggest venue you kind of had you kind of big weight, so it was a job then of mixing them to obviously sound like kind of wanted to make it sound like one night, but you kind of still get the vibe of the different audiences. And so we mixed, kind of we did a rough mix of everything, and then I kind of went away and sort of tried to make the best set list possible. Having already done uh, a couple of the tracks on the Blues album, I chose not to include those, which is Garbage Man Blues and Tore Down and Messing with the Kid. So I thought I won't do another version from another night of those, stick to it. And then it's sort of how much can we fit onto, onto a vinyl, because that kind of sets you up as to uh, how many tracks you can, and because Rory didn't do short songs. There's some good nine, 10 minute versions on, on this record. So to, to do a triple album, I could fit 20 songs on. So that, uh, that helped, because so, most of the, the nights are about 22 songs. So I think we, we did pretty well at squeezing 20 tracks out of it. And yeah, so sequenced it, and then luckily got to go back to Abbey Road and work with Frank Arkwright uh, mastering the album. And it's, it sounds brilliant, you know, it's been a, a joy to work on this one. And the sort of, just the playing and, and between all of them, it's just the, on drums, keys, bass, every, and obviously Rory singing and playing, just sounds fantastic. One of the great things with doing this record and putting it out, obviously it hasn't been released before, was um, finding some Rory tracks that he didn't usually play live, such as Edged in Blue, Jackknife Beat, um, from the Calling Card record. And it was uh, really cool getting live versions of those. Um, Tattooed Lady will be on every live Rory album uh, from here to eternity. But so it's cool having those other tracks, um, Country Mile, things like that. So I really enjoyed uh, working on those songs in particular. Uh, I think Jackknife Beat is like a really cool version. I think he only played it the one night of, from the tapes that we had. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I think it's Hammersmith. And it's just, when he started playing, I was listening through the tapes and when he started the beginning of the riff, I was like, you're kidding me, this is on the tapes? Because not everything was marked on. I was really happy finding that. Rory, going through Rory's record collection and obviously when he would list all his favorite artists, uh, knowing that this album and the blues album were being on chess uh, being, meant so much to him. Um, he featured on Muddy Waters' London Sessions, which was a chess album, won a Grammy. So he's, he's, he has a little bit of uh, gram, uh, sorry, chess history, but um, I, it would have, you know, he has every vinyl from chess in his record collection. So I think it would have meant the world to him that he could have slotted in his own ones on the label. Um, yeah, I expect like the blues album coming out on the blues label. It's you know so cool to him. 